So when they put Tour of Turkey on my race program, I was there thinking, hey, Turkey, that's a holiday destination. I packed my swim shorts, packed my shorts and jerseys for the race. Yeah, it's always nice to go to a race on a, in a holiday destination. No, it is nice. It's just sometimes you realise there is the place is really nice and you'd rather actually be on holiday than racing a bike there. But, you know, it could be worse. It could be, like, Belgium. Um, no offence to Belgium. So, as an amateur, I packed... A, obviously, all my team kit I packed, but then I've also got kit that's not sponsored but is, like, real good for, like, sub-zero conditions. And didn't bring it with me and uh, woken up this morning this is the day before the race and tomorrow's forecast isn't too much different maximum temperature of minus one degree minimum temperature of minus three I mean wait, at that extreme I don't see us racing there's no TT in this eight-day stage race so we don't have turbo trainers well it's gonna be interesting that's for sure we've got a bit of a hit squad here we've got so the team is um, our token climber Sebastian Berwick then we've got uh, me, Zabel, Geisergiv, Branley, Greipel, and Chimalai. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a full-blown lead-out squad. Now, in Copper Bartley, I was climbing better. So the team here were like, hey Alex, we um, we've got Sebastian, but he's near a pro, so we're like, no pressure on him, we're, we're going to see how he goes. It's a couple of hilly stages, we don't want to be like last team on GC, which is entirely possible because we are here to win sprint stages. So they're like, yeah, you were climbing good in Copper Bartley. Can you, uh, can you like, go for it on the hilly stages and like get a good GC position so we can, we can not be the last car in the convoy? And I was like, yeah, I said, absolutely. I, I will give it everything I've got. Just so you know, I, I am climbing better, but Dan Martin, I am not. So um, yeah, I mean, tomorrow's stage. Whether or not it happens, starts with a 5k, like out the blocks, from the word go, starts with a 5k climb at like 5%, and it continues to be a profile of a shark's tooth all the way to the finish line. So we'll give it, yeah, we'll give it a good match. But I'm quite excited to, um, yeah, see what this, this big rig that is not quite as big as it was once can do, because um, the power's all still there. So we'll see what happens. I didn't allow you. That's, that's not okay. So the boys are back together. This is what we packed our swimming trunks for. Tomorrow we had so much of climbing. Now we do it uh, by car. Uh, I don't film me, yeah? Stop getting in front of the camera then. Hey, don't film me. It's like you're, you're too famous. It's like you're one of the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Charles. Show us what you made. Oh, Charles, now I'm wet all. Yeah, so uh, stage one, not happening. Or it might be happening. We might still be doing part of stage two as stage one. So it's we're driving now three hours to Konya. Because I think Turkey's even worse prepared for snow than the UK is. And there's quite a lot here. So I mean, certainly, I did not pack for this. Yeah, this is our team bus. It's like a party bus and yeah, off we go. This is Chimo. Hello. Everybody. The most beautiful rider in the peloton. Be uh, beauty, no, yeah. Belisi. Belisi Chimo. <laughs> exactly. So it's snowing. So I need to eat a lot to get more fat. That means that I'm not freezing so much. That's my tactic at the moment. That's the problem with cycling. Everybody tells you to get skinny, but when weather like this comes, that's my day, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, you yeah, know, those guys winning the classics in Belgium, they're all huge, hey? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> fat. I'm so excited. Really? And I just can't hide. Despite being stage one being cancelled, we are doing stage one which is the flat version of stage two. And then we'll do stage two as normal. It's pretty cold, like three degrees max. So everyone's sort of wondering what to wear, isn't it? Because it's going to be, it's going to be hard, it's going to be fast, but it's going to be cold. So you don't want to wear too much, but then it's going to be cold. Real dilemma. 
as you can see, Branley is analysing fabrics. This looks a more like a three degree fabric than this one. The feeling this one is... Branley specialises in not thinking. 75k stage? One hour 45, says Andre. And the possibility of crosswinds. Apparently, Quick Step have told us they're going at 52k. So we're going to go at 51. Strategy. It's uh, every man for themselves by the looks of things. Some teams more marshalled than others and look better equipped to take the day on. 5.3 kilometres out, Brian, it's getting frantic. Already seen kind of battles in the, in the left-hand side. Now we're seeing Alpesin, uh, Phoenix in the right-hand side coming up. Israel, Startup Nation, haven't kind of hit the front yet, but I'm sure they will when they run in towards the finish. It's kind of all bunched up and very, very frantic. Good lead in here for Israel Startup Nation. 3.8 kilometres to come. So Brendley at the front with uh, Alex Dowsett in the wheel. We see Avaro Hort just looking around. Where is Mark Cavanagh? As we thought, this is going to be a really messy sprint. We will suddenly have a very rude awakening, which is a, a 90 degree turn. Valley also up there with uh, uh, Pierre Andre Cote, the uh, oh, Canadian, and we're down. Oh, there's a few as well being picked up, uh, and, and that's why it's so. Uh, so advisable to be out front. Mark Cavanish has got uh, Alvaro Hodge for company, but uh, Israel Startup Nation have got uh, their riders towards the fore. This is a double phaser, this one. You have to be on the right side of the road. And it's Halverson uh, that is in a great position at the moment. Oh, and a big kickoff here for Halverson, I believe, for Uni Expo. It's he versus Decline, I think. Oh, it's on the throw. It's going to be a photo between them. A very, very sketchy finish. Just watching it now. Okay, that's stage one done. Chimo is currently walking around naked. Actually, with just socks on. Yeah, like 74 kilometer stage, a sprint finish. Everyone is a sprinter. Like it's stressful, but we we got to get we were together. We lost Rick with 3k to go to a puncture, which was a real like it's a real blow. We can, we can kind of get by without. Um, most of us but Rick's Rick's pretty crucial Chimo stepped up but yeah just one man short leaves us uh, sort of scrapping a little bit um, Andre ended up sixth just behind Philipson and Cavendish Rally won it you know X was second and uh, yeah first one in a while saying exactly the same finish again tomorrow but with a dirty couple of climbs in the stage yeah see how that goes funny looking BMW yeah, fully branded up the race has provided there's 25 teams, 50 1.1 litre Renault Clios for everyone's team cars. It's basically the Clio Cup back there, which is, I don't know if there's any motor racing fans listening, like it's on a big sort of step up motor racing series. So it's quite funny seeing all these Clios back there, little revving, just revving because they're trying to accelerate. Uh, I think the convoy is very like, you're either on the brakes or you're on the accelerator. There's not a great deal of in-betweens. So they're like, Wee! And the directors all look really big because they're all crammed in. So <laughs> it's quite amusing. Okay, stage two. What a difference a day makes. Clear blue skies, a light breeze. It's not the turkey I was expecting in terms of heat, but you know, we're getting there in terms of cloud cover. I think this is going to be the last real cold day. This this is the roundabout with, with uh, 3K to go. And Matthias and I led through here yesterday. So we came from oh, we came from over there, and then we went off down there. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing again today. The last 50k is exactly the same, but we have a, a climb at the start, which isn't big, well, it isn't steep, but it's quite long. Honestly, yesterday the big shock was the Uno X team. Branley and I like to think that we have some gas, and they um, yeah, they out they, they just outgunned us. I mean, there's, there's some big boys here. There's clearly some horsepower in that team. Um, 
and Halverson was second. But yeah, they that they did the lead out of the day yesterday. That was there's no doubt about that. Today's golden opportunities where we get to do exactly the same thing again, just better. Oh, stage two. Done. Done. And Chimo, done. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you remember the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Seb. Seb, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Neo Pro Seb's riding the front, and uh, 25k to go, he, uh, he was just like, get down the radio. Yeah, I'm done. And well, I was like, no, you're not. You're done when the team says you're done. <laughs> like, <laughs> kids these days, but uh, in his defence, quick step were done, Alpes and Fenix were done, so it was the right decision for him to be done, but he made that decision himself. Anyway, we nailed the lead out, got there at the last minute. So Matthias did 3k to go till 1.8, and then I did 1.8 till 0.4 to go. Yeah, yeah. Then Rick took it to the finish, and Andre got third, which is good. I mean, Cavendish won it. If we didn't win it, I've been gunning for a, I've been hoping for a Cavendish win for a long time now. So quietly, well loudly, because this is on YouTube, happy for Cavendish. But yeah, nice that the lead out went well. So uh, yeah, anyway, tomorrow we start at a thousand meters, we finish at zero meters altitude. So that's a good thing. But there is a dirty climb in it, uh, which Andre this morning said that he did back in 2010 he said it was really hard front group and when Brandley went which group were you and Andre was like front group and Brandley just went well it wasn't that hard then was it apparently Andre also won the time trial that year so but yeah team spirit's good and Turkey's gonna get warmer I hope basically like being at home in Andorra Chamois time. Of course, I'm sleeping in it. <laughs> there's Brandley. Yes, hello. And there's his ass. Want to see a bit more? No, absolutely not. So two days ago we were driving in what looked like Siberia. And now we're here. And I'm in shorts. This is the turkey I signed up for. Beach, holiday resorts, and a bunch of sprint. End of stage three, we... God, it was probably one of the most perfect lead outs. It was a joy to be present, to be honest. We had a plan. I would go from 1.6 to 800 after Branley would take it on from kind of 2.5 to 1.6. And um, kind chap from Quickstep came and did Branley's job for him. So Branley went deeper. I went deeper till around 600 and then uh, Chimo, Rick and Andre finished it off. Fortunately it didn't result in a win, um, or it did result in a win for Cavendish, you're welcome. Yeah, Andre was like fifth I think, which is, yeah, which is fine. He's, um, oh, he's tough, he's tough. Andre's a similar boat to Cav, searching for that win again. Yeah, it'll come and we, you know, we keep believing. Andre's Massively grateful to the work we're doing because uh, we just, you know, we all want to see him win. He wants to win. We're all working very hard for him to win. So all we can do is keep trying. I think the MVP of the pet of the day was Guy Sagiv, who's the Israeli TT champ. Definitely took us, sort of looked after us until like five, four or five k to go. Really made our life easy. And yeah, so I'll probably close this vlog out on on today's stage. Uh, we've got some more sprints coming. Tomorrow's a sprint, day after's mountain top finish. Oh, let's talk about Rick Zabel's leading out because I am quite convinced Rick Zabel is the best lead out man on the planet alongside Michael Morkov and for two very different reasons. The, the Morkov is just fast. Like He just lights it up and provides a slipstream for any sprinter to just use and launch off of. Rick, on the other hand, as the last man, what astounds me with Rick is his capacity 
to think and make decisions in that last kilometer because it's hectic it's just mind-blowingly fast mind-blowingly frantic yet rick can have a good look around see where his sprinter is somehow see who's behind his sprinter and work out what's best to do like today for example rick did his turn and then saw that Philipson was slightly to Andre's right, so Rick moved slightly to the right, and then kind of got in Philipson's way. And that's it takes something special to be able to have that thinking process when you are at your limit, at absolute capacity, when everything's going on around you, but still be able to make those decisions. So yeah, big Rick Zabel lead out fan right here. And the role we have at the moment, I'm road captain up until the last 10K, and then in the last 10k, Rick Zabel calls the shots. I had one lasting thought, and, um, and that's that I don't envy the sprinters. Like my job as lead out man, I can almost always do a good or sufficient job. The only way I can not do a good job is to not be there. So long as I am there, which isn't easy, then I've done a good job. What I'm trying to say is if I do a 500 metre turn, a kilometre turn, a 200 metre turn, I'll get a pat on the back afterwards. A sprinter can only win or lose. Ultimately, the only time that, as a team, we've been happy with a result that isn't a win is, is was Jens de Boucherle in the Tour, I think finishing fourth or fifth on the stage because of the calibre of riders in front of him. Rick, Marco and Jens were our, our sprinters in that year's Tour de France, but they are not sprinters, not like Caleb Ewan or Sam Bennett or... Ackerman, like those guys, and, and so that's why I don't envy the sprinters because they can only win or lose and it is so black and white compared to the job that us lead out men have. You know, you think like, I think for half a decade now I've been leading out and it started with Marcel, just come off the back of a hell of a year at Quick Step where he'd won five stages of the Tour de France and Marcel had, aside from the pressure of winning a race off the back of seven or eight teammates devoting their entire race to him. Marcel had the weight of the whole team on his shoulders and the team's future. And I won't go into the nitty gritty of the details, but it's it was horrible how much pressure was on Marcel that year or those two years because the team was very low on budget and bought Marcel, I would imagine, for not a small amount of money. And that's a colossal amount of pressure. Yeah, so it was everyone's jobs. My dad and I would talk about it often. I would not have wanted to be in Marcel's shoes. Aside from the paycheck, like that pressure is huge. I think I'm trying to say I'm quite glad I'm not a sprinter, and I'm quite glad I'm a lead out man. Like, as a time trialist, I can I can win a time trial from time to time, but the thing is with the TT, it's all on me. I'm the one that prepares, I'm the one that puts the work in, I'm the one that, and obviously I've got people helping me, but it's not like, anyone is sacrificing their own race for mine. I guess that's the pressure of anyone at the top of the sport because they have the talent to be at the top of the sport. You're talking your GC guys, your sprinters, but the, the pressure of a sprinter I think is is higher because it's so, like they have to get 200 meters right. To have a whole team riding just for you is, is ooh. after today it must be tough for Andre and yeah, hats off to him. Like, because obviously, like, we did a good lead out. It was a perfect lead out, and fifth is not the result Andre would have wanted. And it's easy for a sprinter to blame his lead out train because the sprinter hasn't won. Because some sprinters come with an ego, and Andre isn't one of them. Like after the race, Andre was simply like, "That was, that was a very strong and perfect lead out. Thank you." And kind of no more was said. So I. I my heart goes out to Andre a little bit today, but we have a lot more opportunities in this race. And, you know, we will continue to fight for Andre's win because Cavendish has had, Cavendish got his win yesterday. Didn't need it today. It's just being greedy now. Anyway, this is the end of this vlog. And let me know what you think of what I've said, I think, from, I'm talking from the inside, but it'd be interesting to know what you think from the outside looking in about like Cavendish's dry spell, um, lead outs, sprinters, pressure, salaries that reflect the pressure. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll update you on how the next few stages go in the next block.